Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to show you uh, a couple of things in our three-part series. This is part one of our three-part series of a COA. Uh, that is a clean oil and adjust uh, for you DIYers out there. We're going to try to use limited tooling and show you a basic uh, kind of overview of how to clean your saxophone. This is the first step. I do have a hashtag for you. That's going to be keep my sax clean uh, make sure you put that in the comments below that's going to give you a chance to win 15 percent off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023 and this course uh that we have on june 26 this is the basics there for, it is. it's up there basics for saxophone done right and that's going to give you a chance to be here in our shop you'll actually get to use this sink you can take your saxophone apart we'll show you all of the different basic elements of saxophone repair so whether you are getting into the trade whether you're a student teacher uh if you are a hobbyist any of those uh endeavors uh will be relevant to this course. If Absolutely. you are interested in saxophone repair and want to get into it, get your hands dirty and really learn some techniques. Some, so to some, speak, get your hands dirty, <laughs> but we'll clean them off. That's right. So uh, check out the education section of musicmedic.com and we will be able to um, get you a discount if you take that sax, uh, keep my sax clean, and hashtag put that in the comments below. All right, right now I do have a winner for today. Okay. Uh, the winner is Adriano Sousa. Congratulations, sir. Uh, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and I will get you your discount code. Congratulations. Now, uh, just make sure you take that hashtag. Put that down in the comments below if you are watching this, whether you're watching it live or sometime else during the week. Also, make sure you like and share and subscribe. That really helps the channel out. Uh, Ryan, we have a couple, take a breath, take a couple breath. of we got steps. We got, we got, here we go. We got a couple of steps that we're going to do, and I wanted to talk first about, so we have a clean, but before you can clean, do you have any pro tips for... When I completely take off all the keys, the hinge rods on the inside, um, I'm going to keep them all separate where they need to go. This is a one for uh, pivot screws. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can also leave them in. I'll give you some tips when we get over to the cleaning stage on how to deal with those. But for your rods and then your, your um, pivot screws, I have some screwdrivers. They don't have to be this nice uh, that either lock or unlock, uh, but a set of screwdrivers. Different width tips is very important because there are a couple different sized of uh, hinge rods on saxophones. So you will want a couple different sized tips. Um, pair of pliers, I prefer the duckbell parallel pliers here. You can grab rods if you need to, take keys off and whatnot, a spring hook for unhooking your springs, uh, some rags or a big old shop towel, um, and then this stuff right here, which hopefully you can see, this is uh, 3M polish paper. This is what I use when I'm cleaning off rods and even pivot screws. Uh, I will use this to check the condition, um, you know, wipe things down, um, you know, takes off corrosion, any little bit of rust, um, but this is really nice for cleaning that up. And that's pretty what you need, pretty much what you need for this assembly. One quick tip before you start, though, I'm going to come back over there. That sounds good. With you. Are you already on, on screen? No, here? you're good. You're okay. good. We'll give it a second. Yep, here I am. One big tip before you take everything apart so you don't get jumbled, because it is like a big puzzle, okay? Mm -hmm. Take pictures. Okay. okay. We all have phones that yes. all have cameras. Actually, hold on a second. No, um, we all have cameras, so take pictures of all the little parts and, and, and keys so you can see which one goes over top or underneath other ones. Uh, that way, when you put it back together, hopefully no spare parts left over. <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice when I put a saxophone back together and there's no spare parts. It's like, whew, all yeah. right, I fooled them once again. <laughs> so that's our disassemble part, Ryan. Yeah, so and we do have another video on that you can check out. I'll put a link to that below. Uh, let's get into the cleaning of the saxophone. What are some of the cleaning. tools and supplies we need to clean a saxophone? Pretty much what you see right here behind you, okay, which is um, a lot of, well, first off, a big sink, okay? If you're at home, yeah, you're doing this at home, you can use uh, your bathtub. Uh, but you'll notice this sink is very unique. It's actually used to develop, wa sorry, was used to yes. develop film, mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the day. Uh, gather around, children. Let me tell you a story back when film had, uh, you know, actual film in it. You had to have it developed. But this is what they would use, which is why it's so wide but shallow, okay, mm -hmm. which is very nice for cleaning instruments. It's not real deep. I'm not bending into something. Yeah. I've seen um, shops take big um, outdoor garden ponds and cut a little section out of it. That way they're not bending over, but... Uh, that's obviously if you're in a big shop. If you're at home, you're doing it at home, 
Bathtub works. Bathtub? Bathtub. Okay, Utility good. sink will mm -hmm. also work if you have something big. A um, couple quick pro tips on this. Even though this is plastic, we still want to protect the finish of the instrument when we're doing our cleaning. So a lot of times I will lay something down under, um, under it in the sink before I actually lay the instrument in there. Usually we'll use cardboard. Okay. Um, sometimes we'll use um, an old towel. Okay, so you can use that. If you're doing it in your bathtub, you may have one of those mats, those rubber mats, for keep yourself from slipping. Uh, okay, you can use that. Your okay. own bath mat? Well, yeah, yeah old bath mat. Okay. Old, you know, in the shower, not once you step out, when you step in, you know, in case slippage. The, uh, the rubbery suction cup. That's exactly. Ah, your gra everybody's yes. grandmother had one of those. Come yes. on. So, okay. But you can use that, and that, that way you're protecting the instrument, because you don't want to bump post now that you have this naked saxophone body. Um, it is very easy to bump and knock posts around, so you just want to be, be careful and protect things. Okay. Um, but this is our setup. Okay. What are what Sink. Sink. You need running water, obviously. Uh, we have both hot and cold, and this is my hose right here um Very there's no nice nozzle line. i use the thumb method when i need to spray it down which works we had a sprayer but it usually ends up breaking so i just used the thumb method give okay. it a big old thumbs up so hot cold water um you can see my assortment of brushes that i have laid out could you show them how you use these different brushes i sure can i absolutely yes a lot up. like this <laughs> no but uh you'll need some soap uh my preferred method or my preferred product for cleaning instruments is just the standard Dawn soap, just soap, okay? Very good for degreasing. They have a couple other different types. I'm not sponsored by Dawn in any way, um, but I wouldn't mind if you guys want to send me some stuff. Uh, hashtag Dawn, no, sorry. Hashtag keep my sacks clean. There it is. Hashtag with Dawn. <laughs> I'm really pushing for the sponsorship, okay? Um, here is my Ryan Extra Special bonus tip. My absolute favorite soap is this stuff right here. This is the Dawn Direct Foam. It is highly concentrated. Honestly, one or two pumps in a sponge, you can clean the entire body and keys of an instrument. So um, it is very concentrated. Um, and you can see just other stuff, other applications. There's a sprayer. Um, but this is usually what I use. I don't use any kind of caustic chemicals when I'm cleaning the finish, um, especially when it's a vintage instrument with nice, delicate lacquer. Um, Dawn seems to work fairly well. And then these soft bristled brushes. Okay, some are a little bit firmer. This one's a little bit firmer, but these you can see are just a little bit softer. Um, my preferred method is to put the instrument in, get it wet. Depending on the condition of the lacquer, you may want to use cold water and not super hot water. Okay, so heads up on that. Get the instrument wet. I can either use some of this on the sponge or I'm going to actually use oh, oh. some of the Dawn Direct Foam. There it is. You're watching it. Here it is. Just a few pumps on this guy. And now what I can do is I can get in here. So now you're just now, what about springs, Ryan? Do they have to be careful of the springs while they're using a brush? You do mainly so that you don't stab yourself. Um, okay. the, if I was using something like this with springs, that luckily this doesn't have the springs in it, um, I wouldn't have to worry about it so much. But yeah, those needle springs, especially older ones, are sharp and rusty. Okay. Um, you don't want to obviously stab yourself. Even the pivot screws can be sharp and pointy. So you want to be very careful. If you are going to use a sponge like this, which is perfectly fine, don't use the scour side though, okay. but this side is perfectly fine and you can get in there and clean the bigger areas, but just watch out so that you don't stab yourself or that if you're using one of these, you're not bumping the post or you may, you know, break a spring. So you just want to be very careful. Okay. You can see you get in there, you can get inside the bore. Okay. And you're, and you're on a customer horn, we would be very careful not to scratch the, the, the bore with the, the shaft of the, the brush. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, what about what about the big uh, the big one right here with the this handle? This guy right here. Yeah. Yes, I like what this as well. This is good for cleaning the inside. Sometimes okay. I'll apply a bit more soap in here. Maybe get this, and then you can get in here. Do you let the water run, or can you do like the military method and soap it up and then rinse it all off at the end? Um, I don't know. I I, don't, I do the Navy Seal method. <laughs> where I get it wet and I, I let it swim for a little bit. No, um, so I'll just get in here. With the nice thing about having this uh, sink here is I can just kind of rinse it off when I need to. And again, here's my thumb method. There hey it is. Watch yourself, Rich. Get very splashy in here. Um, so there we are. We've, we've cleaned it. Very good. Now and comes the drying portion.
All right, so let me get the, let me switch to the camera over so you can see a little more. A of little bit more the close up. Bam! There we are, picture in picture. So, so Ryan, we've talked about how to clean the body uh, before we get into the drying. Is there anything else that we should talk about keys, or do you want to talk about keys separately? Keys later. Yep. Keys so later. Yeah, this is just the body. Couple things to pay attention, uh, be aware of is that you are getting the instrument wet. Um, you know, things to pay attention for would be felts on the inside of your key guards. Um, would also be any materials that are glued to the body. You want to just be careful of those. They may come off, but this is part of the COA is replacing those materials. Okay. okay? So just be aware. You do have to make sure you, you, you dry it completely, um, especially if you have the pivot screws in. And that was my tip is if you don't take them out and put them into a, a screw block like that and you decide to keep them in, make sure they're in here tight because you don't want one oh, going boy. down the drain, yeah. falling out. Um, but it's okay. You can clean it with them in, but you make sure you oil them afterwards. Okay. Okay. Any metal parts, which would be your springs and your pivot screws. You want to make sure you oil those uh, properly after you've, you've cleaned this up. But drying. Yeah, let's talk about drying now. So we've got the instrument clean. How do we dry it? Dry it. We use this stuff right here, which is, you can say, compressed okay. air. We have this running throughout the shop. Uh, this is what we use to actually blow dry the instrument. It makes quick work. Um, if you don't have that at home, you can use just regular paper towels, an old, a regular towel. Just be careful that when you're doing this again, you're not bumping posts and you don't stab yourself with a very sharp needle spring. What about cleaning inside the post head where the where the threaded portion is? Can yes. they use a hair dryer or any sort of forced air? You, you can, yep. Yeah, a hair dryer will work. There's other things that, that I've seen some shops use. And, and if you maybe have a pet, you may have one which are called puppy dryers after you, you give your pet a bath. It's like a almost like a reverse shop bag. The tube is much thicker and it blows out um, actually warm air. So again, nice when you're in the winter time cleaning your instrument, but that is another use that you can actually get in there and blow dry stuff. But yeah, you do want to make sure that all the water is completely dried up. In the inside too, you can use your regular sack swab, clean the inside a few times, swab it out, get all that moisture out. Um, hopefully it's completely dry if you don't have a compressed air system like we do. So okay. dry, body's done. Body's good. Okay, we've got the body. Let's move to the keys, cleaning keys. Cleaning, cleaning cle keys. Now you notice there are no keys in this sink because you can't just take a key with a pad in it and all these soft materials glued to it and just submerge it in water. Okay? Don't do that. Yeah. So COA, it's, it's one of those things that you may or may not be replacing some pads. Some you may be replacing, some you may be keeping and just doing like leak work on. Uh, but if you're replacing the pad, uh, I would consider taking that pad out. Or if you're not replacing the pad, you got to clean it a little bit differently. How would you okay. clean the pad or clean the keys if you're keeping, say, all the pads in? I would use probably some kind of solvent to wipe down the outside of the key, being very careful that you don't get any kind of whatever stuff on the pad or even some of the soft materials that you're going to be keeping. Um, so I like to use denatured alcohol. Okay. We've got a big, big thing of it right here. This is what it commonly looks like. There it is. There's our, a lot of times it's used as fuel, depending on where you live. You may not be able to get this, Yes. but you can use some kind of something to wipe it down. You can even use maybe a light soap mixture. Just again, be careful. Don't get your pads wet. Okay. Uh, not good for them. Uh, but this is what I'll use on a rag, just to kind of wipe the keys down. Um, cleaning the insides of the hinge tubes is also very important. Remember, this is clean oil and adjust. Rich has one right there. Thank you, Rich. There it is right there. Pipe cleaners, okay? hinge tube cleaners. Uh, but these are great for cleaning out the hollow hinge tubes, top, bottom stack, um, all the other keys. Q-tips are a fantastic resource to be using uh you know cleaning oh, up there we are we have some more thank you rich <laughs> i love the assistant but there they are uh some q-tips some cotton swabs you know you can use this to wipe down the springs clean inside of post heads uh you know just about a little bit of everything so we're not only cleaning the body but the keys as well think about cleaning all the oiled grease off as well not just the dirt and stuff that accumulates fuzz from your case but we're cleaning the, all all the old oil and grease off so that when we go and do our oiling, the second part of the COA, yes. um, everything hopefully is nice and clean. What about the the rods, the actual rods that go in the hinge tubes yes. themselves? Do you do anything to clean those? I do, um, and I do use a solvent on those. Um, Denature alcohol is good to use on those. The other thing that I will use is acetone, but little star asterisk right up here. Uh, if you do use acetone to clean off your steel parts like your hinge rods and your pivot screws, make sure you oil those up 
immediately afterwards. Okay. And acetone does a great job for removing all that oil and grease from rods, from steel parts. But what then it allows is that air to hit it and moisture and whatnot. And then they do tend to rust a little bit sooner. So if you do use acetone on your hinge rods and pivot screws, oil them up very quickly afterwards. What about the neck, Ryan? Is there any other tips or tricks for the neck? Absolutely, we have. We may even have one over here for cleaning necks um, are one of these flexible snakes, you can see. Uh, and the neck is probably going to get the most amount of dirt, grit and grime, because obviously all that, the mouthpiece, first off, oh yeah, definitely we don't notice we didn't clean your mouthpiece too. One tip when you do clean your mouthpiece, only use cold water, especially if you have a hard rubber mouthpiece, because the hot water will bleach it. So only use cold water when you're cleaning your mouthpiece. Um, so you can use one of these as well, but cleaning off the inside. You would do it much the same way as you do this. Soap and water, uh, brush to clean the, the bore. Um, you know, you can wipe down the neck cork. Make sure you dry it, though. Very important. So. Okay, very good. Let's just come back to right. the camera here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we are. Uh, so, Ryan, we've talked about the body, we've talked about the keys, we've talked about the neck mouthpiece. Um, the only question I have for you is, is there a way for someone like this to learn this in person somewhere? What a specifically odd question to ask, but I will answer it anyway, like I have been unprompted. Uh, yes, there is our course, which is June... Shows, June 26th through the 29th. June 26th through the 29th here in the beautiful... Uh, Wilmington, the jewel of the Southeast. Uh, Semi-precious. Semi-precious so. jewel of the Southeast. Uh, and that's June 26th through 29th, right here in the shop. You'll get to stand by this sink. Okay, this exact sink. It might be a little bit cleaner when you get here. Uh, but yes, it is a good way to come learn the basics. It's the basics done right. We're hopefully not going to teach you any bad habits. We're going to teach you hopefully the correct way to clean and maintain your instrument, you know, tackle basic repairs. And it's a lot of fun. We already, we, few spots left. Yes. So if you guys are even thinking about coming to Wilmington in the summertime to learn about saxophone, sign up. Yeah. And take that hashtag, keep my sax clean, put that in the comments below and we will. There it is right there. Declare another winner next week. Uh, uh, Mr. Garden, uh, nice to see you, Ayako. Yeah, we got some uh, comments. Ayako talked about having the 3M polishing paper. We don't have that on the website yet, uh, so you will have to find a different source for that. But the green, what is it, 30 micron? 30 micron. 30 green, micron yep. paper is really good for those hinge rods. Made by 3M. 3, 3 M. 3 M. 30 grit. Yep. 3M, 30 3 grit. 30 micron. Excellent. Well, Ryan, yes. that is... Uh, we're going to do it for us. Thank you so much for that excellent demonstration on washing the body. Uh, we'll be back next week with part two of our series that is the oil of the Clean Oil and Adjust. And until next time, happy repairing.